the doors are open. I, I can't wait to you know bust in and buy stuff. So I was waiting to see what he got afterwards, and he never posted that photo. And I'm like, dude, did you get anything? Why didn't you post that photo? He's like, I got the Toys R Us at 6 a.m. They didn't open till like 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, I guess I should have been open. I'm like, wow, man, like he really must love Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> he deserves it. What a douche. <laughs> Over to you. Hi, um, I saw Ming at the after party last last night. Yes. So I was wondering how your experience was. Oh, I, I thought it was fun. There was an after party at a place called the uh, Corova, a couple blocks over. Ooh. Oh, Corova! The guy who plays uh, Hodor from Game of Thrones Ooh. was spinning records. He was DJing. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Hodor! And, uh, yeah, it, it was cool. It looked like it was bumping. You know, I busted a few moves. Uh, yeah, I, think, I think I'm. I don't know if you saw me. If you were impressed at all or not, but you were shorter than I expected. Oh. <laughs> How the hell can he be shorter than you expected? <laughs> <laughs> but um, that that She's like, I thought you were at least dwarf height, but you're definitely a man. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that got you to thinking: if like the, a dude from Game of Thrones can go on DJ and you know got, get paid for it, you were saying that maybe I should maybe take this as a side career. I could be DJ Ming. Uh, 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 perhaps. Like yeah, I I don't know much about the world of DJing, but I do see idiots like Paris Hilton doing it. Yeah. Um, and uh, when we went to Atlantic City Con, I saw that uh, Brody Jenner, yes. that's his name, right? He, I, he was doing it, and, I'm, and then I see people doing it, it appears to me like they're looking at a laptop and pressing a button. Yeah. <laughs> now, after that, all you need is like the ability to be upbeat, which you have. I am. Uh, the ability to engage a crowd, which you have. I do. And, and, and what else do you need? Uh, and then a library of music, right? Yeah. Now, is there I, anybody here who DJs or spins or whatever it is called these days? The is there anybody here who does it? Any DJs in the house? There are no DJs in the house that we can consult with. You know what? Maybe, maybe you can team up with Hodor. He'll throw you on his back. Yeah. Would you do it old school or would you take the easy way? No, I would like to try to do old school, but I do like technology. You know, I got like, you know, I, got, I have like Apple everything. So yeah, I may do the press the button kind of DJ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just seems like that. Like in, in back in the day, as they say, like you know, you had guys working through turntables yeah. and scratching and all that other stuff, and now it's just like, well, I have a bunch of cool music in my iTunes, so I'll just press a button and people will pay me for it. How do you get that? Like, I, like, cause I understand this Hodor guy, he's a, a good DJ in his own right, like he's actually respected, yeah. you know? Like he's not the dude who wears the giant mouse head or whatever, like what's oh, yeah. his name? Danger Mouse? Yeah, dead, or Dead Mouse? Dead, dead Mouse! mouse. Dead yeah. mouse. Yeah. Yeah. You could be Danger Mouse, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, you know, if you get a following, it's like you can make a ton of money, and like, like why not me? Yeah. Like, why not you? I mean, why not me? But what, what, you know, sad up People are like, wait a second, he's being supportive of Ming. This is so <laughs> not the show. But I started thinking, a guy I get compared to a lot is John Goslin from John and K. Plus <laughs> you know, as a, you know, as a future failed reality TV star. And I just read, he's been DJing gigs and getting paid like $25,000 to do it. Now, now, this is recently? Yeah. I don't understand. How does this happen? Like, he was... Uh, they were beloved for a short period of time, then the real John and Kate came out, you know, their personalities, and nobody liked them, and John Gosling moved to the woods or something, right? Yeah, something like that. They <laughs> started doing construction, a I don't shot, know. Something. Like, yeah, like, kind of like the Unabomber. And he, <laughs> for, I read that he basically single-handedly destroyed the Ed Hardy brand, because he <laughs> yeah. would always wear those Ed Hardy shirts. And um, he was like on the Ed Hardy yacht, and somebody took a picture, and that was like the apex. Like that was like that was when people are like, no more, no more of this John Gosling guy. And Ed Hardy brand just like like tanked yeah. because he was so associated with it. It was like the reverse of what people, what some companies normally want. Like they want someone, some celebrity to be associated with their with their product, but this was the complete opposite. This was like, oh my God. John Goslin's wearing my shirt, like that's bad news. But now you're saying John Goslin is making a comeback and for some reason, he is drawing crowds and they're paying him $25,000 to DJ. Yeah. 
So if, if, if him, why not me? <laughs> why not you? I repeat, why not you? Like who? Would anybody here? Would you? Would anybody here pay like two bucks to see? <laughs> like even for free? Would you cross the street? Would if you're like, oh my God, that's John Gosling across the street? Would you even cross the street to go say, hey, John Gosling, can I get a picture with you? Like why would you care? Like why would you care, John Gosling? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, where are we going? Uh, this yeah. over here. Yeah, out of everything you guys have seen come through the show, or even things that haven't shown up on the show, like what are some of the craziest items people have brought through the Hitler's show? Hitler's testicles. What? There you go. <laughs> it didn't really come in, but I just wanted to always say Hitler's testicles. Yeah, I don't remember that one, Mike. Uh, maybe I wasn't there that day. Do you have, do you have, do you have a real item? No, I don't have a real item. Uh, the craziest stuff, I mean, the Batmobile. I mean, come on, uh, how many comic book shops get the Batmobile? Um, you know, in front of their, their Only store. Only the ones with TV shows where it's <laughs> beforehand. Pretty much, yeah, see? What's up? I said, yeah. yeah. As far as items, I mean... Well, to find crazy. <laughs> Hitler's testicles. Hey, it's like blowing your mind that you've been super excited about something awesome. Hitler's testicles. <laughs> that, that would it's be a go to. Something, something comes in this year. I, I really don't want to name it because Walt was genuinely excited about it. But something came in this year that was pretty cool. It has to do with the $6 million man. Um, we actually had two things that came in. But, uh, yeah, there was some cool stuff. You're going to have to watch season five because if we tell you it. stuff, uh, I'm telling you, Kevin will put his foot right up Ming's ass. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. <laughs> uh, I, I, if you if you've watched, uh, I'm a big GI Joe fan, and uh, some dude brought in that big ass aircraft carrier that oh, I've yeah, always wanted. Yeah. It's called the USS Flag, yeah. and uh, after like 30 years, I, I was able to buy it. Uh, I, I remember when I first saw it, though, uh, the kid that lived behind me, he uh, he was a kid of divorce, and he got anything he wanted, and he got it one Christmas, and I was like, that bastard, <laughs> that undeserving bastard, how dare yeah. he be gifted? Oh, like, you were so character. deserving. How badly did you want your parents to get divorced? I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. So yeah, but so uh, you know, years later, I had to buy it myself. So that that was that was my thing. That was uh, that was my favorite yeah. item. Not crazy though, really. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know what yeah I don't know what would be crazy unusual do you mean like unusual or unique yeah sure okay <laughs> well we can't well define parameters <laughs> man I, I applaud you <laughs> way to be vague thank you <laughs> yeah well you, you've either seen it on the show already because it was worth airing or it's coming up this year yeah Any, well, anything that you don't see is something that either <laughs> right down the toilet or the, or the person was was nervous because like when sometimes when people come on the show i've always felt like the way i know people are nervous is they punctuate what they say by hitting the counter i don't know if anyone has ever noticed that but they do that a lot like they're like so i brought this in because my grandfather had it and it's it's a weird kind of nervous tick that a lot of people have or they're like it's much different than i thought it was going to be like being on camera and like they don't know that we can if they mess up we can just reshoot it so they think it's like one take and that's it and that's their one chance and they're gonna look like an idiot if they mess up <laughs> my job is to make them look like an idiot so that's gonna happen regardless like of how well they do you know should we tell the story uh, we're yeah. not gonna tell you what there is one lady on this season and we're not gonna tell you what the uh, the item is but she was um, drunk <laughs> and I mean, oh, really, really. Um, anyone with children want to put your hands over their ears? <laughs> well, that's not that. She was <laughs> shit faced. Oh my god. <laughs> you're, okay, you're good. You're good. <laughs> we, we were told later on she brought in like a big bottle thing. of Jack. Yeah. And before she came, and she brought her thing, and uh, like like half of it was gone already. So, uh, <laughs> and she, well, the the kicker to the story is she wet her pants. Yes. <laughs> Like I think it, I'm pretty sure it was post transaction, right? I I, I think so. it was during transaction. Because <laughs> yeah. it was like, wait, what? Why does it smell like the subway? <laughs> yeah. I just think it's different when, like, the idea of I'm gonna go in and there's gonna be a cut, like Brian and Walt or Brian and Mayor Brian and Mike are gonna be there and. I'm gonna sell this thing. And then they get in there and there's four cameras and there's lights everywhere and there's people. It's like, it's a real set. So now 
the pressure's on. So pe like it, people aren't expecting that. So that sometimes people get nervous and like you see them shaking and stuff, and you try to sort of like back them up out of it, so uh, so the transaction doesn't suffer. You know, I try to be nice to them. It's a rarity in my life. <laughs> Being nice to somebody, but you, know, you give it a shot. Or he slaps them. Yeah, but, Either or. That I've slapped a lot of kids over the years. <laughs> it's only TV. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Does that answer your very vague question? Uh, vaguely, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what this question was. Yeah, me either. Over here, what do you got, sir? Hi, I was wondering, uh, you got any Jason Muse stories you could tell? Jason, Jason Muse? Jason Muse. I think Muse has told every Muse story. That, you know what? I mean, the latest Muse story, and it's not really so much a story as an anecdote, is he um, brought his daughter to Jersey just recently, and I watched her crap all over him. <laughs> and, like, literally? Yeah, literally. Not like, say, like I would do, or Kevin would do, and like, making fun of him, not metaphorically, like she literally crapped all over him and like squirted out the side of her diaper. And I've never seen a person so happy to be covered in another person's excrement, like where it wasn't like a fetish or something. You know? Like the guy just like loves the kid so much that he'll, it just it cracks him up. He's sitting there laughing with crap all over him. And I'm like, what is wrong? This guy's a maniac. What is wrong with him? But uh, yeah, that was that was the most watching Muse as a dad is really interesting. Like I, not so much in the heroin days, but like later on, like I always thought Muse would be. Uh, a good father, like he, I literally watched him cross old ladies, like you know, across the main street in Red Bank. What's this guy doing? <laughs> Bolo hat. Um, you know, he, he's just a really nice guy uh, at heart. Does stupid stuff, but I guess that would be that would be the most recent news anecdote I can think of. That was gross. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Over to you. All right, last question. Um, me and Mike, on y'all's uh, comics podcast, you pretty much called that the new Fantastic Four was going to be crappy. Did right. you actually watch the new movie? No. <laughs> I knew sure. it was going to be crappy. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make sure because, you know, I didn't see it either, but, you know, I just wanted to check. Dude, they teamed up with Denny's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you saw that, but uh, I mean, I guess things were going so south in the marketing of the Fantastic Four movie that they teamed up with Denny's yeah. and came up with Fantastic Four themed menu items. Like, and it's awesome. Invisible Girl Pancakes, they bring you just a fucking empty plate. <laughs> <laughs> I have to like them. I, I don't know. I, I, I guess like, I do. I like your take on that instead, like your take about the syrup. Oh, yeah, so they, well, they had like the Thing Burger and like, I don't know, like the, the Johnny Storm something, but um, the one that intrigued me was the Invisible Woman pancakes. So you got a plate of pancakes and they poured syrup on it, but the syrup was clear and sticky to uh, mimic <laughs> Invisible whatever sauce. And of course I, you I, found that interesting, man. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, it was, yeah, and I, I it's was usually like, got a bunch of cooks back there going, oh, god damn it. <laughs> Some more of these damn pancakes. When will they stop ordering these damn pancakes? <laughs> I'm tapped out, man. I'm tapped out. Maple, maple syrup is generally the accepted uh, accompaniment yes. sure. to pancakes. Right. And normally it's brown. How do you go from brown to clear? And the, and the story I would see online was that people would be ordering it and they'd be sending it back because right. it, 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 it was disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I just I keep seeing this little girl in the front row, and I'm like, yeah. I'm about to say something that I'm oh, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hi, little girl. <laughs> See, that's why I'm I'm angled this way because I'm just, keeping my head that way. <laughs> Can't really see her. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? I, I I would like to see. I just I haven't seen a good Fantastic Four yeah, movie since the Roger Corman. And movie. you I, will. I thought the Roger Corman no, one was good. Okay. I thought it had a lot of yeah. heart. Actually, I gotta agree with Ming. The the best Fantastic Four movie out there is the really crappy Roger Corman uh, that he made for 20 bucks. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Got it. We, I don't think there's anybody else with questions yeah. right there. I think they, they shoot them away. Oh, yeah. do they? Why, yeah. are we done? I, I guess. I'm thinking no. pretty much, yeah, we're done. We're two yeah. minutes over, Brian. Oh, uh, well, we could still talk for a minute. Yeah. Who's coming in next?
Oh, kids cosplay contest. Screw kids. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a children's cosplay contest. Bring them contest. up. Brian's going to slap them. <laughs> we know this. A children's cosplay contest? <laughs> well, my kids Cosplay. Oh, the little Eleanor? baby. Yeah, Eleanor. Yeah, Eleanor. Eleanor. <laughs> Um, I was actually, I wanted to ask everybody here, um, are you excited about the Suicide Squad movie? Yeah. I don't know. Now, I don't know. being like a real, like, kind of like a non, like, like, I do like comics, but I don't like superhero stuff. I like stuff like Sandman or Preacher or like stuff where the dudes aren't in tights and stuff. Um, but Suicide Squad, the... The villains are so like uh, from someone who's coming from a where do you think you're going a non comics a non comics background. I look at the villains and I'm like, who, 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 that who are these people? You know, oh, like I'm even Harley kid. Quinn. Like I wouldn't, I, even I wouldn't know that was Harley Quinn. So does that does that bode well for the movie when when it's hard? Like oh, these characters are so obscure that people may not know who they are. There's no like, oh, they're except for Joker. Yeah. You know, people, like, the Joker's the only one you can point at, and that's, he's like Santa Claus. Everybody knows who he is. Yeah. But everyone else, it's like, who's that? Wait, who's that? Oh, wait, well, there's there's Batman on top of the, the car because they're going to put Batman in everything from now on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that uh, this movie is going to change everyone's perceptions of who is Harley Quinn. I mean, she's very big in the, the comics now, and... You, there is an antecedent uh, in the comics for the Suicide Squad, very popular comic strip, uh, comic strip, comic book in uh, the New 52. Yeah, I know, I said that to myself. Um, but um, when people see this and they're like, wow, that was amazing. Same thing with Guardians of the Galaxy. Nobody knew who the Guardians of the Galaxy were until the movie came out. Now everybody, my grandmother knows who Groot is. <laughs> So it's the equivalent. People will now learn because people right. are giving all quarter to comic book movies now. Like if you, if someone goes out there, Fantastic Four doesn't count because everyone knows it's going to suck. But <laughs> but if DC has a big event movie or Marvel has a big event movie, like there are now expectations that were never existed before. Right. So Suicide Squad, they can't afford to screw up. Like it has no. to be. It has to be good. All right. All right. Well, I feel a little bit bad, you know, cutting into the. Kids cosplay contest. Kids cosplay contest. <laughs> yes. And thank you to uh, Alamo City hurts. for giving us the uh, panel time slot. You know, right before that. Uh, <laughs> because God, if we had to follow a kids cosplay contest, <laughs> I would have felt even worse. <laughs> it's like following Stanley. But yes. But, but thank you, everybody, so, for coming yes. out. Yeah. 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 Five in terms of uh, October 18th on AMC after The Walking Dead. Back-to-back -back episode.